Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn, I'm a psychic and a medium. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Today I have a transmission from my spirit guides. Some of you guys are like, what channel have I clicked on? Who is this woman? Oh, hold on just a second. This information you might find helpful because it is a PSA, public service announcement, from a higher vibrational source, maybe even over the pay grade of my own spirit guides, which for once means that I'm not in detention and they're actually visiting me for a better purpose, which I'm all about. It's not about me for once. Wait, anyway, never mind. It's not about me. I'm going with it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to, I'm going to ride this energy to give you this message. Today is a Wednesday and I have a series called Wisdom on Wednesdays, which used to be Way Out Wednesdays, which is WOW. The acronym is WOW WOW. So anyway, let me get started with this PSA. First of all, they're PSA and I'm telling you first of all because I am channeling 40% Susan, 60% Spirit Guides, number one. Number two, you all know once they get this microphone going, that they like feel like they got the bully pulpit and then they're going to go up in here and tell you everything they want you to know and I have no control over the situation. I signed up for this video to tell you about this topic, but I know that they have another topic they really want to talk to you about. So this is like spiritual guide bait and switch. That is what's happening here. We both know it. I'm calling them out on it right now. And I'm also letting you know. But let's start with the first topic that Susan here signed up to talk about. And that is a very interesting statement they made this week. And it's a little bit out there, but it's true. And the statement is, death is the destination. Now, that's kind of rude, I think, to tell a human, right? Because we die a lot. <laughs> we, I mean, meaning that we reincarnate a lot and we die a lot. You know, like sometimes. Well, never mind. Sometimes one time in particular, the spirit guides told me, scared the living Easter peeps right out of me. They told me that, oh, don't worry about that, Susan. You can just fix it in your next life. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm not coming back to this place. Let's fix it now. Come on, let's fix it now. <laughs> you know? So, you know, that's what they mean when they say, Humans die a lot. It, it, we really have short lives for a reason. They call them short lives. Look, I'm I'm channeling. I'm telling you guys. And sometimes Susan pops into like, sometimes honestly, I pop in to say, what? You know, short lives. Anyway, bear with me, folks. We're going to get through this. Okay. So we have short lives so that we can kind of cycle through these lessons quite quickly. And in that way, our soul will grow quite quickly. You guys, I have many, 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 many videos in my wow playlist. If you click the little swirly icon thing, that's my logo. It's a labyrinth. You'll go to my main channel, click playlist, go to wow. You're going to be hooked up for a whole weekend of spiritual videos for free. A lot of them on reincarnation. Okay, so let's get back to what the guys were saying. The destination is death. They're, they're really dumbfounded. <laughs> That's, I'm really, I'm sorry, but I'm happy that they're dumbfounded about humanity and not just me for once, because usually they're dumbfounded about me. They're like, what is she doing? What is she thinking? We didn't, how did she get that? How did she take that action out of what we sent her? Like in what world, in what multiverse, did this woman go this direction when we gave her this input? Well, I'm human, folks. So anyway, they're saying the destination is death. And why are y'all concentrating on the destination? And they would like to, so yeah, this video is brought to you by, you know, like destination. You know what I mean? We have destination weddings. Uh, we go to a destination for our vacation. We often have a destination every single day. If even if it's going to the kitchen, you know, even if it's going to the living room, when we get in our car, we have a destination. They want to say that humans in general, and this is humans, you guys, this is not any particular subset of states or countries or anything like that. It's humans. So 
that means that you guys that get always voted in that happiest, you know, you know who you are, the happiest countries, y'all know who you are. Y'all are in this too with us. The low countries like America. <laughs> We're all in this together. Oh, see how they did that? That's the bait and switch because that's where they're going. See, now I'm now I'm catching on to them. Anyway, let me bring it back to what the heck we're talking about. You can tell the energy is kind of strong. I'm trying to harness it and push it through my human body. And it's crazy. So anyway, the destination, we have all these destinations and we, we're human doings instead of human beings. You know, that's an old statement. And it's so true. We're simply doing the next indicated action. The next indicated action is Susan needs to do a video for Wednesday. The next indicated action is I need to go to work. The next indicated action is I need to uh, go into the kitchen and perhaps make some breakfast. Some of those things are great. Eating, you know, important for humans, by the way, spirit guides. But they want us, they want, they wish, they wish for us to get maybe off of the treadmill. You know, they, they're, so they're, they're not being very kind, but anyway, they're showing us, they're showing me this picture of, of cows and honestly, no shade to cows anywhere, but they're showing me why they want to call them heifers. Cause I know they ain't talking about me. I know they are not talking about me. Anyway, I have not had donuts in a very long time. These cows have, if you could hear what's going on in my head. The guy, the cows have got, they have blinders on, they have blinders on and they're all walking together. Does it matter that these cows are black and white? I don't know. They're just black and white cows. They want me to describe the cows. I'm trying to describe the cows, black and white cows, Holsteins. I don't know what they are. They're walking together. They have blinders on. They're not paying any attention to where they're going. They're simply following each other. They're simply going to the destination, which for these cows might be really nice grass somewhere. I don't know. But they want us to, it's not want, okay. I keep saying want because I'm translating this, right? They wish for us, they suggest, it's a lesser lesser energy of want, okay? Um, in, they would say they want us to do it in the sense that they love us. Okay, they they they're saying they love us too. Okay, they they love, they wish for us. It's like when you wish the best for someone, you send love to them and you just wish the best, you know? That's that's the energy here. Okay, so it's not this authoritarian or you know, from on high, you're doing it's not judgment, is what it is. It's not judgment, it's simply we wish this for you. You have beautiful opportunities in your life path on your life path to experience so much so much love wonder awe happiness stillness and also this opportunity to know that which is greater than yourself which goes back to the word awe you know, A-W-E. So, you know, sometimes experience a spiritual, a spiritual awakening. Now, a spiritual awakening can happen in a place of worship. It can happen in a forest. It can happen at a mountain, at a stream side. It can happen standing in front of a piece of art. It can happen standing in front of a musical band or experience. It can really happen in a planetarium. It can happen in a IMAX theater. You might feel a sense of awe and wonder. You may understand that something is bigger than you. Something is bigger than even the concept of you, the concept of earth, the concept of your humans. Find that. Seek that. Instead of putting the destination in your GPS, in your human GPS of every day I go to work, I come home, I do this. Every day I get up and I do these 10 things and then I go to bed. 
whatever those 10 things are, even if you get up and do a hundred things, it doesn't matter. Do you see the subtle distinction they just made there? It doesn't matter if it's a hundred things that you're doing or 10 things that you're doing. It doesn't matter. You're not more worthy if you're doing a hundred things or if you're doing 10 things. We've mis misplaced our sense of worth onto things, onto you know, money or uh, things, basically. I mean, a thing can be money. A thing can be a house. A thing can be a career. They would like for us to place our sense of worth on experiences, on the sense of awe, of bliss, and also on love, compassion for ourselves, first and foremost. We do not get, I mean, this is how I'm translating it, but that seems like that's what it is. We do not get love and compassion for ourselves by giving it away to others. This is a misnomer. This is mis, This is not a correct guidance. Misguidance? I don't know. This, it doesn't work like that. Uh, we think it does. We've been taught that it does because that... That puts us in a subservient position. And, and it kind of started with um, this sort of hierarchical civilization where we needed to worship something. Well, what, you know, humans did not understand why the flood came. Humans did not understand why their crops failed. And so they started worshiping something bigger than them. And, and, and instead of like being in in resonance with that thing, we put that thing above us and then put us in a subservient role. And so we've given our power away. And they're saying this needs to be reverse engineered. When you bring your power back to you, you find God here. You find whomever it is for you, the source, the creator, you find it in you. You worship it in you because it is in you. And when you worship it in you, it's really much easier to find love for other yous, for other humans, for other everything. When you fill yourself up with love and compassion, it's much easier to have love and compassion for everybody else. And also without judgment, because if you're feeling yourself up with love and compassion, you're not judging yourself. And if you're not judging yourself, you're not likely to judge others. You're, you're really more likely to see the fragility, the vulnerability, the, you, you see the cracks in them. I don't know why that, but there's, you see their, cracks, their fissures, their um, shortcomings, you see that with compassion because you've seen your own and you've loved your own and you've healed your own. And that doesn't mean that it goes away. It means that it's, there's a scar perhaps. There's a scar perhaps that never goes away but you learn to love the scar. Now, how is this different? Susan has just asked the question. How is this different from becoming a megalomaniac, right? This is, this is the cautionary tale that a lot of us have been raised with. Well, if you love yourself that much, then you are stuck up. You're an egomaniac. You're a narcissist, right? That's obviously not what we're talking about here because those people don't love themselves. Honestly, they loathe themselves. They hate themselves. They don't trust themselves. They don't even want to be in their own body. They want to own everybody else's love. They want to own your love, own your loyalty, own your respect, own your fear. They get their love and their sense of power 
not from themselves. They get it from you. And you're giving it away to them. And that makes a nice little, really terrible lesson for one of you. So it's not the same. Can you see that? It is not the same. Loving yourself will, I promise you, 100%. You will have no other option than to love others if you love yourself. Because you know what it took to love you. It took a lot of becoming okay with, of being in alignment, going from out of alignment. I'm too short. I'm too tall. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I'm too dumb. I don't have the degree. I have all these degrees. I can't get a job. I don't have enough money. I'll never be like that person, this person. I'll never... I'll not, why do, why doesn't anybody love me? Why don't I have friends? You know, the list goes on. You're out of alignment. When you bring yourself in alignment with yourself, you're, you're so much stronger because now you love you. I am me. I was born this way, you know, just like the song says. I was born this way and I'm perfect the way I am because this is how, this is the human body, the human container I chose to come down in. This is the set of particular astrological star makeup that, that was in the heavens that I chose to incarnate with. These are the parents I chose to incarnate with. This is the state, the country, the city, the town, the province that I chose to incarnate in. This is the sex, the DNA, the um, race, the ethnicity, the culture I cho chose to incarnate in. Now, as an aside, as an aside, that is what you chose to incarnate in. But those things can change. That's actually the beauty of incarnation and the beauty of evolution of the human. We're born perhaps in a certain sign or perhaps in a certain country or per perhaps in a, sec a, per um, a certain sexual orientation, perhaps even in a certain sex, male or female. And for sure, perhaps in a certain sort of family makeup that might be more challenging than a different family makeup. You chose the exact concoction of your life, but it doesn't have to stay that way. You can change your sex. You can change your life. You could change everything. You could change your vibration. You can make the most of that astrological blueprint that you chose. All of these things are in play. This is what the point of the video is. The public service announcement is the destination is death. It's not about the destination. Stop focusing on the destination. That also means don't, you know, phone it in every day. Don't just show up and wait for your life to be over. <laughs> that is a constant message with the spirit guides. Every day, you, not every day, every minute, every second, seconds. This is, you want to know how they're quantifying our lives in seconds. <laughs> every second you draw a breath, you have an opportunity to change. Every second you draw a breath, you have an opportunity to change. And we're not talking about losing 20 pounds. We're not talking about um, getting a divorce. We're not talking about leaving that job. Those are big changes. And that's what stops us because they're big. And we don't know how to do it. It's overwhelming. We know we need to do it. We don't know how to do it. Forget that. That's the destination. Leaving the job is the destination. Finding the mate 
is the destination. Losing the 20 pounds is the destination. Making more money is the destination. You don't get to the destination like snap a finger and you're there. There's a lot of steps. There's turns and twists and ups and downs. And more importantly, scenery. Scenery. Stop, smell the roses. Stop, look at the sky. Stop, take a breath and be in your body. Humans are not in their bodies because they're on the destination. It's about the journey, you guys. The journey to getting that new job. The journey to making those new friends. The journey to finding that mate. The journey to making more money. And all of those things, all of those things can be had, gotten, had, acquired, whatever the word is, easier when you raise your vibration. Because now you're in the right vibrational kind of time zone, they want to say, or vibrational field or vibrational alignment with the things that would be good for you. And also understand, sometimes we want things that are not good for us for those reasons that we, we, we've been sort of brainwashed by our culture, you know, uh, by our parents, by the time of the time frame that we grew up in, whether you're a boomer or a Gen Z or whatever, a Zoomer, the Zoomers are coming up now, whatever time, time frame within your country, within your society, within your culture that you grew up in, that's your little box. But it doesn't have to be. We are breaking out of the box. We're breaking out of that hierarchical, I'm worshiping something else. I'm worshiping this higher money, this better job, this celebrity. Even this construct that would control me or, I mean, control is a strong word, but I can't, or provide a structure for which I can connect to the higher realms, meaning religion. We are moving out of control. We're moving out of others telling us you can only connect to source through this church, through this thing. Now, I do want to say there are beautiful, holy, sacred, powerful places that happen to be churches and synagogues and temples and mosques. They're incredibly powerful. And any person, regardless of the religion that they practice or none at all, can walk into those special sacred places and feel the holiness and feel the sacred stillness of that love, of that awe. So I'm not, I'm not saying religion is bad. I'm not saying that the spirit guides are saying that at all. But they're saying that you can also find it in you. And that might be a worthy goal to seek that kind of power of stillness of awe within you on occasion, maybe not every day, maybe every day, but seek it. Know that it is possible. Know that it is there for you. And know that as you bring this stillness and this awe-inspiring bliss that would be love, unconditional love for yourself. When you fill your human container up, 
your physical container up with this bliss, this love, this awe. It will emanate out of your human container because your human container is also a vibrational container. Your human container vibrates. Actually, everything vibrates. Physicists tell us this. But for this particular point that they're making, your human container vibrates. And when you fill yourself up with love and bliss and awe and love, you're emanating that out to everyone in your house. You're emanating it out to your pets. You're emanating it out to the physical structure of the place that you live in. And you're emanating it out to the place where you live. Whatever that is, everything is benefiting from this. And they would say to you, how do you think these sacred, holy, awe-inspiring places become like that? Because people go there and they wish, they seek, and they accept this greater love, this greater awe, this greater bliss. And when you have thousands and millions of people going to a place and pouring their love into it and therefore accepting the love back, that becomes a holy place. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a wall. It doesn't matter if it's a statue. It doesn't matter if it's a building. It was made holy by the people that visited. It doesn't matter the name of the religion. It was made holy by the people, by the humans that embodied the love from the creator, and then sent it back to the place. So in this way, you can make your own home a holy place, a beautiful, love-soaked place. Now, I hate to ruin that beautiful ener energy with this, but I just need to answer this because this is what they're telling me, is that what if, because I keep it real here, I keep it real. What if my place is terrible? What if I'm terrible? Because this is what I hear a lot. What if my place, I live with someone who's really mean. I live with someone who's really sick. I live with, with, with a community that is not very high vibration, meaning I live in an apartment, I live in a um, even a assisted living place, or I live in a city that I feel is low vibration, or a country, or a state, or a province, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You feel that I have a hard time raising my vibration because of my surroundings. Well, the spirit guides are showing me some uh, really sacred places that are in war-torn countries, sacred places that have been affected by war, sacred places that have been affected by violence. They're still sacred. So you, what their suggestion is, you bring it into you. Again, right? Again, it's the same lesson. That person is a destination. If you live with someone who's low vibration, then you're saying that's the destination. I'm worried about that. I'm not worried about you. You're worried about them. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about the people in my community. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about my kids. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about the environment. Those are destinations. They're outside of you. So regardless of what you're concerned about outside of you, 
of your physical container. When you bring it in here, when you bring the love and the bliss in here, you get in alignment with you. That's going to impact. Believe me, I know this. One, I know this from my own personal life. And I know this from my clients. It works. When you fix you, that's a Susan thing. When you, when you become in alignment, fixing means that something is wrong. When you bring yourself into alignment with you, with love, self-love, you love yourself. You come into your body. We're not even in our bodies. We, we live, the guides are saying humans live five feet outside of their body. They don't look at themselves. They don't, they don't love themselves. They're not in their physical body. Sometimes you have to go, okay, I'm back. I'm me. And you have to say, I'm me and I love me. You know, hug yourself. Get in your own body. That's part of that, okay, I'm going to start loving myself. When you do that, the destination doesn't matter. The job doesn't matter. The money doesn't matter. The people in your household don't matter. Now, I know these difficult things in your life, these difficult things, but also these people that you love, that you're worried about. When I say they don't matter, that triggers you. That triggers you because you've put all your self worth in them. And if they don't matter, then that's, that hurts. That's like, no, that doesn't make any sense to me. They have to matter. I love them. You do love them and you should love them. If you love them, you love them. The whole video is about love. We're not saying don't love anybody. We're saying you can love them more if you love yourself first. You can't pour from an empty cup. If you love them so much, that you're going to wear yourself down to the threads. When they need you, when they really need you, you're likely not going to have it in your gas tank to help them. You cannot help them if you're sick, if you're laid down in the bed, if you cross over the final destination. Who's going to help them now? If you're doing everything for somebody else, whether they love you for it or whether they're using you for it, I hate to say this, but it's the same energy. Whether they love you for what they're, or whether they're using you, it's the same energy. The thing to do is love yourself, become strong, become beautiful in your vibration, and they all benefit from that. Those people you love that you want to help that love you are going to love that you're happy. They're going to be thrilled that you're healthy. They're going to be so on your team and cheerleading you because they love you and they want you to be happy. They want you to be well. They want you to have enough money. They're on your team. Of course they want you to bring your love back to you. Wouldn't they? If they really loved you, wouldn't they want you to be happy? And also, there's an important thing about leading by example. For you parents and grandparents out there, or siblings, or anybody, when we get our act together, that's a Susan thing, when, when we... When we raise our vibration and get in alignment, people are like, what are you doing? You look so happy. You look so good. What are you doing? Tell me your secrets. What are you doing? I'm loving myself. I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of myself. I'm really paying attention to my own needs. And I'm really happy. I'm just happy. I, I don't know what else to tell you other than I'm really, really in a pretty good place right now. Well, keep doing it, girl, because you look good. Right? That person loves you. 
that person's cheering you on. If this person is, is jealous and upset with you that you're taking time for you, hey, what's going on? You are not here for me. You sure are busy doing a lot of things for yourself. You really are being pretty uh, self-absorbed. You know, why are you, you know, if you're, if that is a loop that's going on in your mind, you were trained by a narcissist. You were trained by a narcissist. PSA, public service announcement from your spirit guides. That is not a correct thought pattern. That is not a correct thought pattern. You are love. You are loved. You are love and you are loved. Those two things will fix everything in your life. The people that are treating you bad will disappear. They'll disappear because you're not a source for them anymore. They can't take your love because you're loving yourself and emanating it out to whomever can benefit from it. You know, when we love ourselves, it's not like we keep, it's not stingy. It's not stingy. We're not keeping it to ourselves. We're actually, it's like a cup that's overflowing. Everybody gets love. When you love yourself, everybody gets love. But they have to align with love. They have to, they have to be, my God, I love being around you. Your energy is so nice and calm and whoo, it feels so good. I always, I always enjoy our energy, our time together. Cause when I when I leave, I feel better. Said no narcissist ever. But people that are well adjusted, yes, they say those things. There's a difference between. Giving love to somebody because you're trying to help them, trying to help, trying to help. That's the destination. That's going away from you. Then I am centered, happy, in a place where I'm pretty good. Maybe I'm not blissed out. Maybe I'm not in awe. I'm just pretty good. I'm just chilling. But I'm in alignment. I'm just chilling. Or I'm in awe. Different than being out of alignment. So as you find this place more and more and more, because it's a process. And it's and it's not always, it's not always, nobody lives their lives in 100% alignment. You know, this is life. This is human life. This is a dualistic planet. So the, the vibration will kind of slide around. That's okay. As long as it's as long as you're aware of what's happening and you can kind of find some time to bring yourself back in alignment. It's when we live in our lives out of alignment. All of our lives out of alignment. The whole life out of alignment. That's the destination. That's the I'm just trying to get through this life. I don't know what it wants for me. It's been hard. I don't know what it wants from me. I can't figure it out. That's because you're giving your power away to everybody else. Bring yourself back in alignment. Self-love. Even if it's only, even if you only feel content. Content is what we're striving for. Ah, oh, the, the inspiration, the holy, the bliss. That's fleeting. It's beautiful, but it's fleeting. Contentment is what we're striving for here. I'm content. I feel content. You know, remember, you guys, if, you're, if you've watched my other videos, they often talk about a song. A song doesn't just have low notes. It doesn't just have high notes. It doesn't just have middle notes. It has all the notes. A song that we really find catchy. That, that we really enjoy plays all those notes, the highs, the lows, the middles, sometimes in rapid succession, sometimes building up. That's life. That's human life. Playing all the notes, having all the colors. We just don't want grays. We don't want reds or blues or yellows. We want all the colors. Even the pea green or the dirt brown or the, 
blinding white. We want all of them. We don't want to just live in our favorite color. Am I wearing my favorite color? No, <laughs> that's funny. That is funny that I am not wearing my favorite color because this is the third shirt that I put on today. That's funny. And that's how Spirit Guides talks to you. No, this is not the right shirt. No, this is not the right earrings. You think that's just you? Many times that's a vibrational match. I need to wear this color today. Don't know why. That's a vibrational match. So find ways to love yourself. And a lot of things in your life will come into alignment. Your health, your wealth, your happiness, your safety, your contentment, your bliss. Are you going to live a perfect life? No. I already told you guys, you punched a ticket to this planet Earth. This is not Nirvana. You got if you if you thought you was going to Nirvana, you need to go get that ticket out the junk drawer. Take a better look at it because you can't you are on the wrong adventure ride. This is Earth. Okay? This is dualistic. This is up and down. This is contrast. This is all the colors, even the ones you don't like. All the songs, all the notes, everything. But if you create this well of happiness, this well of love in you, no matter what life throws at you, how horrible it is, you'll find your way back to vibrational alignment faster. You're not going to live like this. But if, some, if life throws you for a loop, which it will, it will, you'll be able to find your center and love yourself and heal the grief, heal the loss, heal the anger, the disappointment in, in a quicker time. You know, it's the ball that gets held under the water. Love is the air in that ball that pops it back to the surface. You can't hold a ball underwater unless you force it. You let it go, it's going to come right back to the surface. That's you. We may go underwater a little bit, but we're going to come right back to the surface. That's humans. We're meant to. We're meant to come to the surface. We're meant to pop back up out of whatever challenges knock us down. And oftentimes, isn't it funny that when you give up, that's when you pop back up. When you're like, I don't know how to fix this problem. I don't know what to do with this person. I don't know what to do here. I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to not think about it. I'm going to let it go. You want to know what happens? That's when your spirit guides. When you let go of the steering wheel, when you give it up to God, you give it up to a higher source, that's when it can help you. All right. This has been your public service announcement from the Spirit Guides. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be more in the future. Please take really, really good care of yourself. Know that, that you are worthy. You are love. All of us. There's not a person. No matter what anybody's done, it does not matter. It does not matter. You are loved. It does not matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter who you think you are or who you think you are not. It doesn't matter. You are loved. Okay? Take really, really good care of yourselves. I'll see you again next Wednesday.